Carly and Linda Bloom are here with you for Bloom Talks in the Valentine season. And we've got an interesting uh, offering for you today to consider don't underestimate the power of vows. And we take vows usually two times a year on Valentine's Day and also on our wedding anniversary. And we've been doing this for many, 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 many years. And at our wedding, which was 46 years ago, we didn't elect to take the off the rack vows. We made our own personal ones at that time as well. And so we renew vows from previous years and we add fresh ones. And it's been a really uh, incredible process for us to revitalize our relationship and to make the sacred promises. And they've changed over the years. We also know a, a number of couples who do this. They don't assume that when your wedding anniversary comes that you automatically re-enlist or when Valentine's Day comes that you automatically re-enlist, that we make a conscious choice to say, I'm in it. I'm in this relationship with you. I am examining how our relationship is doing and if it needs to be strengthened in any area. And so I'm a big advocate of this process. I was mentioning to somebody that I was talking to about her wedding this morning, how much I enjoyed it, how heartfelt it was. And I said, you know, I love ritual. I just feel that ritual and ceremony is so beautiful. And of all the rituals and ceremonies, the wedding ceremony is the most beautiful of all that really touches my heart. And to only make those sacred vows at our wedding, I think is just a waste because there are always new aspects of our relationship that we can be declaring the ways in which we want to give to our partner, perhaps uh, give them some information about what we might want to receive in terms of their vow. And so there's three components, what they give to us, what we vow to them, and that what we both vow together for the well-being of the relationship. So we want to give you an overview of how powerful this process can be, and then we'll give you some examples, some personal ones from our own life. of We've taken holy vows with each other and uh, how they've enlivened and strengthened our relationship. You, uh, <clears throat> you, you may have noticed that um, if you've been watching these uh, talks and listening to them, that Linda and I uh, have some, we're different in some ways. And uh, <laughs> lots of ways. <laughs> yeah. And, and um, the, you know, the title of this talk has to do with the power of vows, mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, which we both, <clears throat> we both appreciate. Um, and, um, I see it a little bit, well, the way, I, the way I see it is there is really no inherent power in a vow, um, unless that vow is trustworthy, unless the person who's making the vow has a genuine commitment to actualizing it, to translating those words into actions and behaviors that really uh, are going to show up and make a difference in the lives of the people who are involved. So, so a vow is really only as good as the integrity of the person who's making it. So in order to really get the full benefit of, of a vow, we really have to be able to rely upon each other and ourselves to be absolutely committed to keeping it. Mm -hmm. And um, one of the things that uh, Linda 
one of the differences between us that used to show up early on in our relationship is that Linda was much better at fulfilling her commitments. I was pretty good at making them, but not always fulfilling them. And, and I was really good at making excuses why um, I couldn't. And that's usually the way I put it. You know, well, this got in the way or this was a problem or I didn't anticipate this. And I had a lot of really good reasons why um, I wasn't able mm -hmm. um, to fulfill it. I'm able in air quotes <laughs> because, <laughs> of course, I was able to, but I was choosing to prioritize other things. And um, one of the things that um, I've learned in, in our relationship is the importance of really being committed to the words that you use and to the promises that you make and to hold a high standard, to keep them, to embody them, to act uh, in accordance with them. So when we can do that, when we trust ourselves to do that, when we trust our partner to do that, then we hear vows in a very different way. We hear them as something that we can really count on. Mm -hmm. If you hear the word resolution as in New Year's resolution, probably if you're like most people, that doesn't really inspire you to be totally confident that that's gonna happen. I'm gonna lose those 20 pounds by June 1st. I'm going to give up smoking. I'm going to whatever, whatever it is that I've decided to do or to not do or to stop doing. Um, and, and, and part of the reason why we don't really feel uh, a strong sense of enthusiasm and trust in New Year's resolutions is that a lot of us don't hold them as absolute commitments. So one of the, an example of a vow that uh, I'm gonna give relative to that is that um, uh, I, I vow not to commit to anything or to agree to anything with you that I am not absolutely confident that I am going to keep. Mm -hmm. And I'm s certainly grateful for that one. Mm -hmm. And I want to acknowledge you that you've really lived that vow for many years. And it mm -hmm. certainly has made our relationship a lot stronger. It's made the trust a lot stronger and I live with a lot of peace of mind. I made that agreement with you too, but I know that that was more of a growing edge for you well, than it was for me. I had other growing edges. Also, you know, when I first made that, uh, you weren't really happy with that because I was saying no more. Yeah, to but your I'd rather request. that you be honest, that yeah. you be compliant, and that I know that once you do give your word, then you're going to keep it. Yeah. I can take that to the bank. Yeah, I yeah. had different growing edges. I had to vow to to you to be your worthy opponent because mm -hmm. I was weak when we first got together and I would cave in when you would be harsh with me and have a cutting tone on your voice and angry and disapproving that I, I would give myself up. So one of my early vows was to be honest with you and to tell the truth. Mm -hmm. I had to start speaking in my own behalf and pushing back. And I took, took me a while to grow into that kind of strength. Thank you for tutoring me about how to be a worthy <laughs> opponent, but um, I don't just lay down and take it anymore and I don't sell myself out. Another one of the vows that I made to Charlie early on was to really become aware of my sore spots that were left over from a family of origin because there was a lot of craziness and dysfunction and manipulation in my family of origin and to the degree that I was not aware of it and not really working conscientiously with it then I would project that stuff onto Charlie. I would project my unfinished daddy stuff into Charlie and think when he would ask for something that he wanted that he was going to dominate me, that he was going to insist on getting his way. And so one of the earlier vows that I made to you is I'm, re I'm really going to do my own work to see how much of it is this incompletions that I have with mom and dad so that doesn't keep contaminating my relationship with you. Well, that, that, that's a good example of, of how when one person makes a commitment, 
uh, or a vow, then that very often can provoke the other partner to uh, or support them to in their own work. So, for example, um, when when Linda became more more able to to do some of those things that she's talking about and not relate to me as though I was some kind of a controlling, dominating patriarch, um, that, that helped me to get over um, an issue that I had, which was my resistance to asking for support or help. That wasn't something that was not a strong suit of mine. Mm -hmm. It was a very weak suit. And as she became more able to um, relate to me as someone other than her father, and she was able to be more open to me and less defensive, then it made it easier for me to risk being vulnerable and asking for things that um, I wanted or needed from her. Mm -hmm. so, so the thing about, um, you know, one of the points that we want to make today is that vows um, really, to be effective, they had got to be very personal. They've got to be specific to you as a person and to you too as a couple. So that's one of the reasons why we always, um, we, we've officiated in a bunch of weddings and we always encourage people, we don't insist that they do, but we encourage them to at least include in their vows something that is specific to them. You know, they can use the uh, off the rack vows if they if they want to but if, if they do to at least try to supplement it with something that's specific to them mm -hmm. and so we're going to give you some examples of some things that we have vowed um and sometimes we've reaffirmed those vows year after year and some of the things that have come up that we've included that have become more relevant as our lives and our relationship has grown and changed. So one of the things that I had to work with early on in my relationship with Charlie was jealousy. Now this man doesn't have jealous bones in his body, but I was insecure in the relationship and I would feel <coughs> threatened by his other um, interests and uh, man friends and having women friends. And it was a, a problem for me. So my vow was to work with my jealousy, to tell myself the truth about it, and to speak honestly and openly with Charlie about it so that he, he could give me some reassurance so that I could soothe myself and so that I wasn't, you know, um, feeling that need to want to control what he was doing and where he was going and who he was talking to and why was he talking to her and da-da-da-da-da. And I had to work with that for a while. I'm happy to report <laughs> that the trust got strong enough so that jealousy didn't have to be something that I would have to keep vowing to year after year, that it became uh, much less of an issue than it became a non-issue, and I could go on to higher level vows. And one of the ones that um, also kept me operating at a low level was that um, I had a tendency to go to the victim place. When we had any differences between us, I would feel like he was um, being domineering. And I vowed to recover from the victimhood and rushing to take the victim seat. And that was another really important step forward in my commitment to myself to grow and to heal from my past and that I rose up to a higher level of responsibility and then we could both take ownership of the ways that we were less skillful in our relationship and what we were committed to in becoming more skillful in the relationship. And yeah, and that's, that's another example of how one person's, in this case, your mm -hmm. vow yeah. uh, really supported me to deal with, with an issue that I needed to deal with, which was my defensiveness and my need to control, because I had that going on too. And so when you tried to control me to becoming less controlling, 
I would just over control to get you to stop trying to control me and well probably yeah. most of you know where this goes that wasn't fun uh, it's not it's not pretty and and sometimes it can go down rabbit hole pretty quickly and then you've got to kind of claw your way out of it and so w one of the one of the vows that i made from that is that rather react with my own desires out of my own desires to control uh you and to protect myself from your efforts to get me to be the way you want me to be, that I was going to be more honest and more vulnerable and let you know what I'm experiencing when you do that, mm -hmm. which is very different than counteracting and trying, you know, to, to, to out control you mm -hmm. by doing or saying things that are designed to intimidate you or designed to put you on notice or threaten you. Um, and, um, that was really helpful to me because those kinds of, that kind of defensiveness when both people are trying to control each other. And there's always, by the way, fear underneath those efforts to control mm -hmm. and the challenge is to get vulnerable and to recognize the fear and then to, to speak it, um, in a way that the other fe person doesn't feel attacked. It was really nice to get some of these foundational things out of the way, yeah. the, the coarser level of uh, jealousy and taking responsibility rather than being a victim and, and working with insecurities and family of origin wounds. Then when we r rose up to a higher level, then I could bow to things that were way more fun for me. And one of the things that I vowed to is to be your believing eyes. And that means that I could see strengths, signature strengths that Charlie had, talents and gifts to give the world that he maybe wasn't so um, in touch with or really taking ownership of. And they were so obvious to me. So I vowed to hold up the mirror so that he could see himself more clearly, you know, his golden self, his special and unique wonderfulness and that was way fun and thank you for, yeah, for doing for that me too. for me too being yeah. my believing eyes so that's a beautiful vow to make when you really feel abundant and you just want your partner to thrive because all their successes is likely to come back on you I want to tell you about one year when I really was looking hard I had made so many vows in previous years and really lived them that I went to Charlie and I said, you know, I'm really having trouble finding anything to add to the set that we already have. If there's anything that you would like from me, please tell me. Mm -hmm. And that's when you told me, I want you to take better care of yourself. Will you vow to take better care of yourself? I never could have conjured that up in a million years. But yeah. I was grateful that you told me that because that was definitely my growing edge at that time because I was, you know, doing too much for the kids and working too much at that time. And I did need to learn more about compassionate self-care and responsible self-care. Yeah. Well, you know, this, like in so many other cases, um, led to s some ongoing conversations about what that means to take better care of yourself, what it means to provide yourself with compassionate self-care. Um, and most of us think of that in physical terms, like, well, you know, I, I need to um, take more downtime. I need to rest more. I need to go to the gym more. Uh, I, I need to lose weight. I need to gain weight. What, whatever it is that, that we're thinking, it's mostly about physical self-care. But when we use that term and when we make that vow, we're not talking just about physically providing self-care. We're talking about emotionally, spiritually, psychologically, uh, mentally providing ourselves with a high level of support to maintain and to develop higher levels of well-being in all the domains of our life, not just the physical ones. Mm -hmm. And sometimes our, our partner can see things that we're neglecting in our own life that we can't recognize ourselves because 
you know, we're too much in the middle of it. Right. We don't see it. Like when Linda acknowledged uh, what she saw as gifts that I have, um, a lot of that was just, at first my response Surprise. was, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> you know, like, because, and, and see, this is true for so many of us, that when we have a, a knack for something or we have a, a, a gift of, of being able to do something well, um, even people who are extremely competent in those areas, sometimes um, they don't recognize it for one simple reason, which is when when you have been given a, a, a gift and a gift by a gift, what we mean is something that you have been endowed with, mm -hmm. that you haven't worked to create it, but you have been the beneficiary of the, this talent, this ability, this sensitivity, that something, somewhere, somehow was given to you. And, and when it is something that's that natural, uh, we often can tend to underestimate just how meaningful that is because it's really easy to assume, well, it's no big deal. I mean, like, it's just what I do. I mean, you know, can't everybody do that? Or, you know, no. maybe, you know, but, not but we, tend, we tend to not appreciate yeah. what we've, what comes easy and naturally to us. So when Linda would acknowledge these things in me, um, at first, I, I didn't really trust it because I thought, you know, she's just blinded by her affection for me. But, but then I began to realize that, you know, this is just my resistance to taking this in mm -hmm. and accepting it and appreciating it. And when you're able to exchange these kinds of vows, then both of you are really deeply enhancing your connection um, and, and your relationship. Mm -hmm. by doing that. I want to share for the listening audience one of the really important ones. When I began to understand that a very basic difference that you and I have was that you're so introverted and mm -hmm. I'm so extroverted and I stopped taking it so personally that you needed <laughs> so much time alone in solitude. That year was the year that I vowed to be the guardian of your solitude. And I have held mm -hmm. fast to that commitment. And I remind Charlie that he hasn't gone off on meditation retreat and that he thrives when he has at least a few days in the month to call his own, to do whatever he wants to do when he wants to do it and to do or not a lot of nothing if all he wants to do is just, you know, be. And so that would not be my idea of a good time is to go <laughs> off for days in mm -hmm. silence all alone. I'm a people person. I like to connect. I like to talk. I like to touch. All that's my, you know, my bliss. But I understand that his bliss is different and I want him to thrive. And when he comes home from those retreats, he's in such a sweet mood and he's in such a generous frame of mind that there's a lot in it for me to be the guardian of a solitude. And I also wanted to say that things change over time. So things that may not be necessary in the first decade or two or few of your relationship may be important when you're 40 years together. Now we're 50 years together. And we have taken vows to keep our sexual relationship as vital as possible. And so as you age, your body isn't quite as strong, the hormones aren't as strong. So you have to put a little bit more time and effort and care into having the pleasures of the body be as good as they can be. Mm -hmm. And the one that I'm really digging on now is that we, we vowed towards adventure and novelty. And the way that's showing up for us isn't just in our career about adding new challenges there, but we are going on more international trips and seeing more of this world. And I'm really enjoying that. And that vow to um, having novelty and adventure in our life mm. is one of the reasons that I think that we're as lit up as we are, both in the career and, you know, in the non-career part of our life. And so I, I'm enjoying that vow mm -hmm. to try new things and go new places and 
to be out on that edge of risk. Well, in, in line with that, um, one, of, one of the vows that um, I've made relatively, well, within the last couple of years, I guess, is, is, to, um, is, is to see the differences between us. I mean, I, I share that desire for adventure. Mm -hmm. with you and I'm glad that you've taken the lead in that um, but it's not as strong well it, it's probably not as strong because you know I've done more traveling you yeah know, yeah than, than you have but but it's but I, I always enjoy it um, but I you know I used to see our differences as something that I had to um, when there was a difference in terms of interest or different in different things um, I would see them in terms of things that I needed to be able to accept mm -hmm. the differences. Mm -hmm. And um, I've kind of blown way past acceptance as a goal. Um, <laughs> what, what I'm looking for now, and, and I feel like I've been pretty successful in achieving it, is what I'm looking for now is appreciation for the differences. Mm -hmm. And what I've found is that um, I don't have to settle for simply accepting that we have these differences and, you know, not getting bent out of shape about them, but just, to, you know, being an acceptance of them. And now I always look for, and what's the gift in this difference? What is it about this that um, is really a beneficial thing that's enhancing our lives together in my life? And I've been able to find that with every difference. Whenever it, whenever it comes up and I start feeling some uh, uh, irritation about something, I'm, I'm able to very, very quickly come to a beneficial aspect of that. that Hallelujah. Yeah. So uh, in, in wrapping up, I just want to mention that one of the things that I'm so grateful for these days is the commitment that we made to each other and the holy vow that we took to live with an open heart. Because mm -hmm. I feel like it's really deepened and sweetened our relationship mm -hmm. and moved us along our spiritual path with forgiveness and letting go and opening mm -hmm. the warm heart of compassion. And I think it's one of the reasons that we're thriving as much as we have. So I appreciate so much that that's something that you, you really wanted to vow to me and have me vow to you and vow to the well-being of our relationship that we would make living with that tenderness and that vulnerability and that open heart be a signature part of our relationship. I'm enjoying it. Sign me up. Okay. I'm down for that. So if you feel inspired to renew vows on Valentine's Day, we wanted to do this a week ahead of Valentine's Day to give you some time to be thinking about what your relationship would need as a extra sparkle to add to it. And we just want to tell you that we do it privately. But if you feel like you want to do it with some well, kind of this, ritual this and ceremony, this isn't exactly, this isn't exactly private. private. Usually <laughs> we just do it with each other on Valentine's yeah. Day. But if you want to have people bear witness to it, that adds strength. It adds strength to declare, it adds strength with witnesses, and it adds strength to write it down in a form of a letter that you give to each other. Mm -hmm. And if you want to really get wild and do it up big, then in addition to the little private ceremony that you do with each other, have a honeymoon to go with it. Mm. Take a little romantic getaway and really do it up proud. So we want to tell you about a couple things. If this has sparked some uh, inspiration in you, tell your Facebook friends, have them follow us or follow you on Facebook so they can get a load of this too. If you haven't signed up for our free eBooks, come to our website and you go to www.bloomwork.com and you will get three valuable eBooks um, for free and we will have your email address so you'll be able to get a booster shot of inspiration once a month and we want to give you a heads up about what next week's topic is and we're speaking about work life balance are we done
We're done. Okay. Thanks for tuning in. Enjoy Valentine's. See you next week. Bye-bye. Have a great week.